Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ifwa Labi and for this video we are going to talk about streaming. Now, if you've been living under a rock, you, you have no idea that almost everybody and their grandparents has launched a streaming service and it's been very baffling for me and for a lot of people why all of a sudden everybody wants to get into the streaming service, like everybody wants to cash out on streaming. Now, let's go back and do a little bit of background. For the past couple of years, Netflix has been the major streaming service. You know, Netflix almost has offices everywhere around the world. So if you want your content to have like a wider audience, you just put it on Netflix and almost everybody will see it. So for the past couple of years, it's been Netflix, Amazon Prime, and Hulu. These have been like the popular streaming services that people know about. Then all of a sudden, I don't know, it feels like the networks and the studios were like, hmm, Netflix seems to be making so much money. So we also need to cash out on this streaming thing. And out of nowhere, every studio, every television station is announcing their streaming services. There's been CBS All Access. There's been DC Universe. There's been um, NBC app. And, you know, all those were like, you know, they were like companion apps to like the television stations. Then right now there's Disney Plus, Apple TV Plus, NBC has, they are going to launch Peacock next year. There's going to be HBO Max. Even BET has a streaming services, BET Plus. And for the life of me, when anytime any network, or anytime anyone announces their new streaming service, I just go, oh my God, not another one. Because look, first of all, all these streaming services come at a cost. Right now, Netflix is like $12.99 or $15.99. And Apple TV Plus is $4.99. When you calculate the cost of trying to watch the content across all these streaming services, a month you'll be getting close to like $100 for streaming it's so crazy that everybody wants to cash in on the streaming service like at first if you want to watch anything you just have to go on netflix and you have it and first of all i have i have my own gripes about netflix because if you're in africa the titles that you are allowed to watch is very small like you are entitled to like very small pool of channel of titles or movies tv shows like it's very small and so if say in, I think in Northern America, they get like a thousand new channel, a thousand new titles every week. In Africa, we get like a hundred or even like 50 titles every week. So already there's a disparity on what we can see. And with all these new streaming services coming, I think it's only Apple TV Plus that just went live worldwide. Because first of all, if you have an iPhone, you have Apple TV Plus. So it's just a matter of paying for it and then you're good to go. Disney Plus launched and Disney Plus is now available across the world. I checked. So, I mean, so first of all, most of the streaming services that are going to come out is going to be very limited to like North America and maybe Europe. Africa is going to be like the last thing most of them think about. But if somehow, some way, they'll find a way of profiting off us. First of all, this is what I have to say about it. I feel like streaming services are great because they'll provide a way, like this is my hope, that it will provide a way for like independent content creators to like come on board and like their content to get to like a wider market. You know, that's the dream, like have content or have like certain shows, certain movies that wouldn't do so well in like the box office, come, do, wouldn't do so well in the box office and the traditional television, come on streaming and then to have like a wider audience. Because think about it, for a show like Sense8, if it was on a, a traditional television show that had been cancelled a long time ago, well, Netflix cancelled it. But it had sort of like a cult following. So that's like, for me, that's the great thing about streaming. But with so many services, I mean, how much content can you really consume, really? And with those price points and how much they are going for, you are going to just pick and choose. And that leads me to like the next, the big problem or the biggest problem I feel like everybody has kind of figured out what happened with streaming, pirating. I don't, like, I'm not trying to be like a killjoy or anything, but you can't have like, 10 streaming services where people have to pay for $80 just to watch content. Maybe they'll watch like just one show for maybe BET Plus, three shows from Apple TV Plus. I mean, Disney Plus has like a lot of titles. Maybe you want to watch everything on Disney Plus. HBO Max, maybe you want to watch everything on HBO Max. Peacock, you want to watch maybe one show from Peacock. And then you have to pay like $80 when you can just go onto your favorite piracy site and then you know you have all of the titles there for you to enjoy with regards to piracy this is what happened when disney plus launched the first week they released a report that over 10 million people pirated the mandalorian 
And I was like, that makes sense because if you're already going to lunch and you're just focused on North America and there are people in Africa that want to watch The Mandalorian because they're interested in Star Wars and they're not open to watch it on Disney Plus, where else do you think they're going to watch it? You know, and I feel like that's one, I feel like that's one part of the, of the conversation that nobody wants to have. The fact that there are, too, there are going to be too many streaming services and everybody's going to be like fed up because people still... I feel like people still stick to Netflix. Me, I'm on Netflix, Apple TV. If I didn't have an iPhone, I don't know how I've gotten an Apple TV Plus. But I use an iPhone, so I have Apple TV Plus. I use Netflix, Apple TV Plus. I don't get Hulu. Amazon Prime, sometimes it's on and off because Amazon Prime, I just watch like one show from Amazon Prime. That's The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. And recently, Modern Love. And then Hulu, I watch just The Handmaid's Tale from Hulu. And maybe Marvel's Runaway. So you see, that's just like three shows. And I can't pay like another $6.99 just to watch three shows from a network. Netflix has like, Netflix is such that they always recommend things for me to watch. So I feel like if I'm ever going to pay for so many, if I, if I ever have the option, I'll still stick to, I'll still stick with Netflix. Do Apple TV Plus because I mean, it's available anyway. Disney Plus, if they decide to come to Africa, I probably will check it out because Disney has like a huge catalog of content, a huge catalog of, uh, new stuff and it's all very exciting this is another fear for me about this whole streaming thing reboots i feel like for people to for most of the networks or for most of the streaming service providers because they because most of them apart from amazon prime and apple tv plus because those ones are going to just start from the ground up they're now going to build their ips and their and their then their catalogs they don't have as much to go on but for most of the ones that have their own catalog of content or catalog of ips i feel like i'm going to see a lot more reboots sequels da 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 because disney has already done it. when Dis when disney plus launched they gave us lady and the trump there was noel and the mandalorian which is like a prequel sequel to the star wars franchise so i feel like moving forward that's what a lot of them are going to do to generate interest so that people will be hooked and then they'll introduce new ones that's my hope because hbo max hbo max when it was announced they announced like there's going to be like a gossip girl reboot and they got me because i'm like i love i love gossip girls so if you're going to do a gossip girl reboot guess who's going to pay how much it says to get it do you understand so i feel like that's like the, that's like going to be real because already i'm really tired of all the reboots the sequels the prequels the whatever the whatever and with all these streaming services everybody wants their interest to peak so imagine they'll be like the matrix but it's a, but it's a television show a four-part event for the matrix everybody will want to be like oh i remember the matrix i want to do that i feel like with these streaming services it all comes down to the price point i feel like no matter what you talk about it will always come down to the price point who is giving you money like who's giving you value for money right now the only service that's giving me value for money is netflix apple tv plus has like i'm coming apple tv plus launched with four shows considering the fact that they had no ips to work with i mean this is great and the four shows they made sure they had like star power because there's the morning show there's c there's for all mankind there's dickinson these are like you know they came up pow, pow, pow. so for a lot of them they are also going to come out of the gate swinging disney plus already said that most of their shows apart from the mandalorian are going to be slated for next year so if you want to watch uh Vi wonder vision that's next year if you want to see the new captain america series that's next year so they are so right now they're doing is like you know laying down the interest and they have like most of the old shows and things so that's what disney plus so that's picking your interest you know all these little little things disney plus also i think going to fold in hulu but the annoying thing about disney plus is because they are in charge of marvel they've already canceled all the marvel shows everywhere because they've canceled cloak and dagger on freeform they are going to cancel marvel's runaways on hulu the netflix marvel shows i mean they've been long dead a while back so that's that for them and the funny thing is that they want to position disney plus as a family friendly channel and if you're going to do that those ips are not going to be i mean they're going to come back newer i don't know so this is my thing about streaming it's it's going to be very dicey moving forward because even netflix according to the numbers they release for their shareholders i make it they're actually running at a loss they're not making that much money in the first place so all these people trying to get a piece of the not making money cake i don't understand it 
but we live to see another layer for this whole streaming thing for me is the numbers how are we so sure who or how many people are watching what at what point in time because you know first of all netflix does not release their streaming numbers for nothing they just tell you that oh 100 million are subscribed to our streaming platform and when a new show comes out they just say that oh 40 million households or 40 million accounts watched it but they don't say when they watched it whether they watched it during the the month you know nothing so that's going to be interesting for me to like to discover are all the streaming networks are all the streaming platforms going to give out that information as to the number of people that are on their various platforms are they going to see are they going to like put out how well their shows perform like say apple tv plus so right now there's c there's the morning show there's dickinson there's for all mankind they, so far i haven't seen them put any numbers on like active watchers of the show like you know they haven't said okay maybe in the first week 15 million people watched the show you know for the past year netflix has been canceling shows left right and center and most of the time they don't give like any reason for it like they don't give like any concrete reason for it where you'd be like you know almost tv sh tv networks you'd be like oh people weren't watching it that's why they canceled it so obviously i mean it's not people are not watching it so it doesn't have a lot of eyeballs so it's being canceled but for netflix you realize that some shows a lot of people be like wait we actually like the shows so why did they cancel it and because they don't provide numbers to it why they cancel shows is basically in their purview so that's another thing i want to see well all the streaming networks give out data on who is watching the demographic and all those things and that's one of the major things i want to see and that's one of the major things that are going to be interesting for this moving on because you know what otherwise companies are going to pad their numbers and nobody should come at me like, oh, no, no, no company is going to pad their numbers so you know that's for me that's a major thing numbers 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 and the data are they going to release the data or not so that if they're canceling the show you know that okay wonder vision didn't perform that's why it's being cancelled because when netflix cancelled sense 8 everybody went up in arms so like, well, how can you cancel such a show everybody wanted the show no reason they just cancelled it so moving forward are we going to get the numbers or are they going to do a netflix formula just tell us that this show is high performing and we'll never know whether it was high performing or not so i mean hey everybody no i don't know if about everybody me personally i feel like if there was just one streaming service where you everybody puts their content there so that kind of like music so if i want to listen to Burner Boy, I don't have to now go and look for some Nigerian. It's there. Do you understand? I don't know why they had to do this to movies when they couldn't just. Spotify has so many album titles. Why couldn't they do the same thing for movies? It's really beyond me. And television shows. Right now, you have to pay so much out of pocket just to enjoy content. And this will take people back to reading. Because guess what doesn't cost as much to do? So, anyways, I'm done with this video. Let me know if you are subscribed to any streaming service let me know if you are going to subscribe to any of the upcoming streaming services hbo max disney plus apple tv plus netflix hulu amazon prime peacock dc universe cbs all access bet plus i feel like bet plus should be renamed to tyler perry plus because most of the shows on bet plus are mostly from his studios and look in an upcoming video i'm going to talk about my candid opinion on Tyler Perry's two shows, The Oval and Sisters. So that's, you know, upcoming. So let me know, but let me know, are you going to pay for all the streaming services? Are you going to pay for none of the streaming services? Are you going to pirate or not pirate? Are you all for all these people owning these streaming services? Or you're just like, we are tired already. I feel like at this point, if anybody else announces that they are doing streaming, I will scream, okay? That's, that's where I'm at right now in life. So anyway, my name is Ifa Labi. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what you think below in the comments. Subscribe to my channel and I'll see you on my next video.